He had 500 units in apartments, and he still decided that Airbnb rental arbitrage was his next best route. Mitch Pomeroy comes on the show and tells us why even after a million dollars of passive income, Airbnb was his next step in his real estate business. Hey guys, welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. First of all, I am super excited. I need to let you all know about this. We are expanding our business to Phoenix, Arizona. So if you know anyone that is in real estate in Phoenix, Arizona, and would be a good contact for us, um, you know me, I'm always about adding value to people. I would love to be able to connect with anyone that you have that would help us to be able to move our business to Arizona, maybe make it a win-win all the way around. So uh, we're going to be doing mainly Airbnb. What a shock, uh, mainly Airbnb in Phoenix and Scottsdale and that whole area. But uh, basically, just would love to be able to connect with anyone. So um, DM me on Instagram. That's probably the best way, at fearlesskyle. Or if you are more of an email person, info at fearlesskyle.com. And of course, as always, I always want to add value to you guys. And so um, this is just going to be an episode which I think will – just completely lift the lid off of what you know or expect out of Airbnb. I think a lot of people look at Airbnb and they kind of say, oh, you know, that's not really real estate. That's not that, you know, that's more of just like, um, you know, a hobby. Uh, that's not going to be able to replace my full-time income. This is a guy, Mitch Pomeroy, who was making over a hundred thousand dollars a month of passive income. And he said, Let's try Airbnb next. And now he has completely blown the lid off of this Airbnb stuff in Fresno. Went from one unit to 21 in a blink of an eye. And now he's going to be at 30 by the end of the month. He's going to be at 50 before the end of the year. And he sees the vision because the guy is making, we, we had a private conversation. I think he's making upwards of $1,500 per month, per unit. Now he does a lot more of the three bedroom, two baths where I have like one ones, two ones, all the way up to three twos. But um, I'm just super excited because he's going to be able to show you why Airbnb here today. Now we, we made this video in our Facebook group. Um, and so I'm just repurposing this. So you're going to hear me talk kind of to our Facebook group. If you have any interest in joining that Facebook group, all you have to do is just email me and we can talk about uh, what that looks like. It's a very low entry fee and we'd love to be able to have you uh, be a part of it. So uh, info at fearlesskyle.com is my email. And all you got to do is ask, what is that Facebook group all about, Kyle? And I would love to be able to tell you more about it. And once again, DM on Instagram is also an option there too. Let's get to it now with Mitch Pomeroy. All right. Uh, well, we are live, guys. And um, I'm super excited. And, and I just want everyone to know that is in this group, like this is the power of this group. You're about to get a one-on-one basically look in and uh, get to do some Q&A as well while this is going on with Mitch Pomeroy. Uh, Mitch is like, and this is what I love about this business because um, like probably a year and a half ago, I'd be looking at a guy like Mitch and be like, wow, it'd be amazing to like even have a conversation with this guy. But like in real estate, there's so many different ways that everyone can add value to each other. And Mitch and I really just had this great conversation a while back when we realized, oh, hey, we're both in doing this Airbnb thing, like let's say in communication. And um, now, I mean, like, I still kind of pinch myself, Mitch, every once in a while, because I'm like, wait, this guy has over 500 units, and I'm giving him advice. Well, I mean, we're both giving each other advice, right? But I'm still just like, it doesn't feel like I should be in the same room as this guy. But you, you're, you're a stud, and I'm excited for you to be on the, um, on the Facebook group. Again, we're going to repurpose this for the podcast, which I'm excited about as well, too. But um, only, only the Facebook group is going to hear some of your secrets and tips, which um, I think is going to be super valuable for them. So, uh, Mitch, thanks for uh, jumping on here, man. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad that uh, that you reached out. I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Well, uh, you, like many people in real estate, have that abundance mindset and love giving away information. So um, thank you for just being willing to do that. Um, I guess the first thing that I would love to know um, and make sure everyone in this group knows is not just your Airbnb uh, portfolio. I, I kind of posted that already in the group. 21 Airbnbs, uh, eight of them are arbitrage, adding another nine. So you're going to be at 30, which will surpass me. Uh, 
<laughs> but <laughs> well, we're but I'm, no, no, hey, that's great though. I'm, I mean, we're we're working together on this stuff too, so I'm excited that uh, that we're both able to do this in mm -hmm. Fresno. But um, 17 of those are arbitrage, which is just phenomenal. But before we get into the Airbnb, Airbnb side, can you just bring people up to speed on your real estate portfolio, which is just it's crazy. Yeah, certainly. Uh, just a just a quick, you know, kind of synopsis. Uh, I started out selling real estate, and then I represented real estate investors uh, who were buying bank-owned uh, court step auction properties. So that I learned that game. I learned how to flip properties. Um, I flipped over 500 single-family residents, and then I got to a point where I kind of flipped myself out of single-family, and I wanted more of passive income. So then uh, I bought a fourplex. Um, three and a half years ago. And then I went from three to 500 units in two and a half years, two years, somewhere around there. And then, <clears throat> you know, we, we were kind of playing around with Airbnb um, two years ago. And, you know, we hired a company who ran it for about a year. And then, uh, you know, and then my nephew took over some of them. And then you and I had that podcast. And then I started looking at it and I was like, let's, let's dive in. <laughs> yeah. Let's just that, dive in. That's awesome. And I did, and, you know, so. That's awesome. Well, and, and just so people know, you, you said you went from three to 500 units in a couple of years. You meant three units to 500 units, not 300 to 500, right? Yeah, no, I went from having a fourplex to 500 units. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah that's that's amazing yeah. <laughs> so really quickly a lot of people in this group um and that are listening right now are more so um airbnb related but um you know just talk about how life-changing that was to go from three uh, you know a, a duplex to um uh, or so, sorry did you say a duplex or a fourplex uh fourplex the fourplex. first the first duplex i bought was a fourplex yeah so that's going the, from that to 500 units in such a short time what did that do to your lifestyle um, you know, for me, the way I kind of look at income is, is a little different. Like when I was flipping houses, you know, I've had 15 cars before I've had that kind of stuff. So I'm like past that point now, <clears throat> when I got into the, uh, to the single family, uh, when I went from single family to multifamily, I was looking for more passive income and to grow to 10,000 apartment doors. And so, um, but what I've realized in real estate too, is like, you know, depending on the market, COVID, whatever's happening, you know, you got to make adjustments as the market adjusts as well. Um, but you know, a lot of it had to do with networking and just building great relationships with people and finding people that were good at things that I didn't have skill, you know, or experience in. And so, I mean, I've done everything from, you know, raise capital to deal sourcing, you know, uh, reselling it, representing investors. So I've learned pretty much all those steps. But if I was starting over again, I would partner with people who already have the skill set that yeah. I'm looking for. You know, it's just a, it's just a, a way you're cutting all the learning curve out. And so that's how I went from four to 500, from four units to 500, is because I started partnering people with people who could capital source. And I started reaching out to wholesalers so they could bring deals. So I wasn't just finding the deals or people on my team weren't just finding deals. So I do the same thing with Airbnb now. And so, you know, I went from, I started doing my own Airbnbs July 1st. And so we're at 13 live, you know, on my own, plus the eight with the family members. And we're scaling the family member stuff too. We're converting, you know, our own units into uh, Airbnb, um, right now. And so, That's awesome. um, but on top of doing that, you know, I'm scaling and I'm arbitrage. Uh, and, and so my plan is, is kind of to move, uh, you know, 50, I'd, I'd like to be at 30 by the end of the year, but I'm, I'm think I'm hitting, I'm moving fast enough now where I think we're going to raise it to 50. And that was kind of my goal, you know, but along the way, you know, I'm being very particular on the properties that I'm, that I'm picking, um, the people, you know, that I'm, uh, networking with, you know, are the ones who are bringing deals now, the arbitrage deals. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it has to do with, uh, you're one, you're only one person away from somebody who has your next deal. Yep. But you always got to talk about what you're doing and why you're doing it and how you're doing it. So like when you asked me earlier, uh, if I'm, if, if I don't have any limitations on questions you can ask, um, you know, 
And the reason why I'm like that is because I want everybody to know what I'm doing. Cause then they're all, Hey, I know somebody who's got a house. Yep. Uh, or like, you know, one of them was my, the guy who was cleaning his mother-in-law had a house. I said, Hey, would she be willing to want that? Yeah. Okay, great. Let's talk awesome. to her. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, yeah. and I know that's not necessarily what we're talking about today, but I talk about it all the time um, on anything that I'm doing, whether I'm doing a webinar on a podcast or whatever, like just that abundance mindset of telling everyone what you are doing. And, you know, but it's funny because like you and I have talked about it too, right? Where we're like, wow, we feel like we have one of the best kept secrets in real estate in the Fresno area because not everyone knows about this Airbnb thing. And like, you know, the, the mindset is, oh man, what if the market gets saturated? Or, oh man, what if, what if this happens? What if that happens? But you just have to trust that abundance mindset and just keep on sharing, knowing that eventually it's going to create more opportunities than anything. So um, that's awesome, man. I, what, what was just really quickly, uh, what was your, and I, I want to ask this cause I, I really want people to understand the power of Airbnb. What was your cash flow um, before you ever even entered into Airbnb? I, I think I had heard somewhere you were cash flowing upwards of six figures a month. Was that right? Yeah, so so yeah. the gross is uh, north of seven hundred thousand a month, and wow. so but with partnerships and all that kind of stuff, my net is uh, over a hundred thousand a month. So why does someone who's literally passively or as almost as passively as possible, who's making over a million dollars a year that way, look to Airbnb as that next thing? You know, some of the thing, uh, some of the things I really like about Airbnb. Um, and arbitrage is that so I have a variation of income coming in and so a lot of things can you know uh, depend on where my taxes is at too so to give an example like you know if I own apartment buildings I have tons of write-offs over there so I can take in a lot more cash and because I have those write-offs and I'm renovating those apartment buildings it'll offset uh, a majority of what I'm gonna make through Airbnb and so with um, you know, what I like about Airbnb too is that I can rent a, I can rent a place. I don't have to pay the property taxes on it. I don't have to pay the property insurance on it. Yeah. I'm not paying all the major maintenance issues on it. And I get the full use and, you know, two and a half to four X of what it would normally rent for. Yep. It's so when I looked at magical, that, right? <laughs> that was it. I was convinced. I was like, wow, this is, you know, and the, and the other part too is like you're, you know, you're providing a service to people. So like the, the units that, that I'm doing um, and the areas that I'm doing it in, I'm being very, very particular. Um, I'm probably spending a little bit more money on the setup than most people are. Um, but I want a certain clientele. And, you know, I'm focused on traveling nurses, doctors, engineers, uh, traveling business people, uh, you know, PG&E contractors that are constantly, you know, like, you know, visiting the area and, you know, need to rent Monday through Thursday, Monday through Thursday, which is perfect time. They're there Monday through Thursday and you get the weekend crowd. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just the benefits of it. I also like the idea that I can learn this model where I'm at and then I can look across the United States and find another market that's not necessarily one of the top MSAs, you know, it's not Dallas, it's not Miami. I can go to another Fresno market where people don't travel there for vacation as much. They go there because they have to, right? Yeah. And I would rather have that because that's consistency, you know? Yeah. It's so funny. You and I were talking on the phone the other day and you literally said what I tell everyone. And I don't know if you would, if we had heard it from each other or what it was, but you literally said the words I tell everyone. People yeah. come to Fresno because they have to, not because they yeah. want to. <laughs> and yeah. and it's, it's an amazing thing. It's, su it's such a like um, th this perfect storm, right? Where it's like, you know, okay, the hotels are bad. Uh, the, the reasons of which you're going to come here are not always like, you know, hey, oh, I'm going on a great, you know, getaway to Fresno. No, I'm, I'm going there for business or man, I haven't seen mom in a while. And now we got two kids and, and a, and a wife and, and we got to go and find a place and we're not going to stay in a hotel. We're, we got to feel like we're at home. We're going to get a kitchen. We're going to go on an Airbnb or exactly. get that person from China every once in a while. Or like, you know, um, it seems like, you know, the, a lot of places from Europe where they're like, Hey, we're going in over all across California and we want to use Fresno as the hub. 
And it, it really is such a unique place. But um, I guess I want to kind of talk about that for a second, because some people in this group and that are listening right now are like, well, I'm not going to go start Airbnb in Fresno because I live in Arizona or I live in New York or I live in, you know, wherever. And they're probably thinking like, how do I go and identify that kind of market like a Fresno, maybe that's only a couple hours away from me, or um, maybe that I have some connections in and I can partner with someone. So what are some of the things that you see in the Fresno market um, that if you were going to go duplicate it, like you said, and go look in other markets, what would those factors be? You know, I would look for, I would look for things like, you know, what are the most, uh, or, or which, which cities have the highest uh, traveling nurses that are coming for hospitals? Um, you know, that, that's huge right there mm -hmm. because there's a lot of cities that, that, that cater to, you know, and there's so many hospitals there and, you know, kind of like where we're at right now is like, you've got to look at necessity, not vacation anymore and tourism, you know, and I was, you know, like, so if you were, let's say like you were in Austin, Texas, I would be looking at the sub markets around you that have 500 to 1.5 million people there and what why would why are people traveling there is it nursing is there a like fresno has yosemite you know so i was thinking about that the other day i was like okay well what's the next market we're going to go to i want to find something where people have to go you know um there needs to be at least five hundred thousand people there it's kind of what i was thinking and, and it might be a little bit smaller um the great thing about airbnb air dna you can go in and look at the stats and see how many nights you know uh, what's the average booking, you know, um, I look in, I go into Airbnb all the time and I'm looking around at cities across the U S right now to just see, okay, you know, um, like for me, I was telling you before, <clears throat> one of the things I always, that I do is I go into Airbnb. I want to know how many units are available today. Yep. A lot of people have a tendency to drop their, me and you talked about this the other day, they have a tendency to drop their rates because they feel like they need to book. Right. And, the units that I have with my family, we did that for, for a while. Like, you know, when we had somebody managing, I'm like, um, my relative always felt like we needed to have them booked hundred percent of the time. So they did all these long-term stays and, and it was great. But then I started looking at it and I was like, who's, who, who has an available place today? And I looked like last night, I looked last night, I had four, uh, four, uh, cleanings yesterday and four of the five listings available last night with uh, uh, four beds or more, I had four or five on the market. Okay. All four of them were booked today. And I didn't discount my rate. And they all booked, you know, at higher than what most people are, are getting. That's, yeah, so awesome. So and awesome. You know, I think anywhere around the country, you know, I think that yeah. um, the one thing I would be careful for, uh, I'm sure you've probably seen this too, is that you wanna make sure you check the local laws uh, and what they have on short-term rentals. Um, I noticed a lot of those big, those big cities like Nashville, you know, so what happens is when you're in a big city, you're competing against wall street companies like Sonder yep. and, you know, all these companies that are just going in and creating this huge arbitrage, but you're not going to see them in a lot of the sub markets, you know, the Fresno, no. the sub markets around Austin, you know, um, you know, and, and it's pretty much through, like that throughout the United States. The smaller cities, I think, you know, or the, the, the small to mid cities are, I think it's like the gold mine. I think that's where most people should be. Yeah. And you know, what I really like about it too, Mitch, is um, you, you brought up a lot of good points there. But I think the number one thing that I love about a market like Fresno is that because there's not a ton of seasonality, I know what I'm going to make. I know from month to month that, hey, I don't have to save a bunch of money because two months from now, we're going to have 50% less gross income. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but, you know, during January and February in Fresno, um, instead of being 95% booked, I'm 89 to 91% booked. Yeah. Not a big drop off. And instead of making $150 per unit, I'm making $130 per unit. Um, it's, it's not a huge difference. And that's, that's so valuable, especially if you're just getting started in this business. What if you start in a Newport beach at the wrong time and you're losing money in the first two months because it's the worst season to start? Well, it's going to jade you. It's going to get you like, really like, ah, this business doesn't work. Meanwhile, in July, you were going to make possibly 
with just one unit, five figures of passive income in one month. And you just didn't know because you got too scared in the beginning where Fresno or places like Fresno are just so stable. Um, you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, one of the things that I noticed too is like, because during the COVID era, if you go in and you look at Airbnb and you look at places like like Newport and Miami, you're seeing the rates significantly drop there because they are like tourist destinations. And so, you know, a lot of the people who are traveling from overseas and all over the planet, they're not getting that activity anymore. So I, I was looking, I, I looked at a, a Airbnb um, on the ocean in La Jolla the other day. It was like 4,000 plus square feet, 700 a night. That's probably an eight thousand dollar a night Airbnb normally on the yeah. ocean. It was right on Wind and Sea Beach, and I was like, yeah. unbelievable, you know. So I think, and the other part too is that they're so, they're so saturated in a lot of those, uh, you know, traditional vacation cities, and they're not getting they're not getting the tourism now that you're seeing them fall off. Yeah, and and they're <clears throat> if you're doing arbitrage in those in those types of cities. I would be a little bit more nervous right now because your your rent your rent rate is going to be really high, and yeah. if you're not getting that tourism, you know it's gonna it's gonna be an issue. So I've got an interesting question for you that I I've, I've never asked um, really to anyone because I've never been able to talk to anyone that has this kind of experience. But you have been a landlord at a very small level, a very yeah. large scale, and now you're a um, short-term rentals landlord started out as a small level. Now you're getting a lot bigger. Um, can you talk about some of the pros and cons of being a landlord short-term being a, versus being a landlord long-term? Yeah. So, so one of the things that, that I've noticed a difference in between, you know, like all the apartments that we, that we have right now, um, you know, we, there's section eight, we have, you know, C class, B class complexes, uh, section eight housing authority, VA, um, regular residents. And, you know, there's, there's a lot more, um, management and maintenance involved. And I have a management team that runs a lot of that. Um, but you know, the, the challenges that you see in that, um, like the apartments that I own, all of the insurances, by the way, uh, doubled this year. Wow. We, sh we shopped them out through 10 different brokers. And <clears throat> so the challenge is, is if you're in an area and we have moratoriums on evictions across the United States right now, you know, until February, and that's probably going to roll farther and farther and farther, you know, um, as, you know, as we kind of move through this. So what I've noticed is uh, I've had over 300 bookings since July 1st. I've talked to someone four times. That's it. You've done what to someone four times? I've only had four conversations through Airbnb. Yeah. Everything else was automated through the platform. Once you, you know, I mean, there, there's a few things you got to get used to once you have all your, your instant messaging and that kind of stuff down. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, my hardest challenge right now is uh, just cleaners really. Yeah. And make sure that the, the units are cleaned, um, you know, asking for five star reviews, you know, so we've kind of made a lot of these, you know, rules in there, but the difference between um, the apartments and the short term rental is uh, the cash flows three times the amount. And I can yeah. tell you that right now, three to four times the amount, like the units that I own, I mean, I was renting them for 875. They're making anywhere from 3,700 to 4,500 a month right now. It's amazing. And so now I'm converting each of, of the specific ones that I own, you know, certain ones, you know, we're just going to leave them the way they are. Um, Cause that, that's also part of, you know, of my uh, portfolio and you know what I'm doing, but um, some of the properties that I hadn't thought about doing, you know, short term rental, I was like, let's just do it. Let's see what happens, yeah. you know? And we threw it out there. I mean, they're booking 150 a night, you know, right out of the gate. It's amazing. And so, so, you know, so, so I, I way easier uh, management system than, you know, you don't need as many people involved in it. Yep. You know, you don't, once you get it set up, you know, it, it pretty much is, is really automated. I'm sure there'll be challenges as, you know, as I get to 30 and then 40 and 50 yep. and a hundred and whatever until we 
<laughs> do <laughs> do the other 50 in another city, Mitch. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. So, I mean, there's so many good things there and I, I just need to like share from my standpoint too, because I was a regular landlord um, in April and May when I freaked out about COVID, you know, I just thought, oh man, we're going to have all these bans. And, um, you know, people from Europe were messaging me that are friends of mine in Airbnb and they were like, we're shut down, turn everything you have into month to month rentals. And I mean, just from people trashing the place to domestic violence situations, to people not paying on time, not being able to evict them. And it's just like, man, like I, I thought that less cash flow meant less headaches, less cash flow meant more headaches and more work and vetting people out. And like I had to now, I mean, I was by my phone for 14 days in a row, day and night, just trying to figure out who I was going to put in these units. Whereas like Airbnb, you got the instant book on and it's like, oh, cool. Someone just booked for seven nights for $1,200. Woo. You know, um, but, but I, I just think that, you know, when you have the right systems in place, it's just exactly what you said. You know, you're going to go through the, the learning curves, no matter if it's one unit or going from one to 10, you're, you're going to have to adjust. But mm -hmm. if you have that ability to problem solve and to adjust. I think this is the business for you, um, especially if you are like, like Mitch here and can get arbitrage units. So, you know, of course we've been talking about arbitrage this entire time and people are probably like, wait, I think I understand arbitrage. Just to make sure everyone understands, arbitrage is just leasing and then you sublease on Airbnb with the, uh, with the exact, um, the, the permission of the landlord. And, you know, um, that's, that's always, I get this question all the time. Um, that's, that sounds like a hard sell. That sounds like it'd be really difficult to convince the landlord. Um, what's been your experience? You know what? Um, what I do is a little different. Um, you know what though? I, I think, I think how, how it works out is like, I'm just going on apartments.com, Zumper, Zillow, Realtor.com. We'll find a bunch of properties and we just set appointments and we go meet the people in person. And we're walking all, every single unit we can. And, you know, a lot of it is just having a conversation uh, with them, with a mask on, whatever it takes, you know. I don't care if we had to put a bodysuit on, I'm showing up. <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of it is, is just um, them being comfortable with you. Right. That's, I think that's 90% of it. And so, you know, um, you have two times to make a first impression when you first show up and when you open your mouth. And so what you say to them is going to have an impact on, you know, and we're going to get no's. I've had a lot of no's. I've had a lot of people tell me no. Yeah. And you know what? We'll call them back next week and we'll ask them again and we'll ask them again and again and again and again until we have a relationship, you know, and for a while they might say, no, no, that's okay. I'm still going to ask, you know, that's good. That's good, man. Yeah. I mean, that's really all it is just having conversations and it's so simple. Um, as long as you can just be a human being to another human being and then show them the pros and cons of this while also building a relationship. I mean, you know, that's, that's the thing is like a lot of people tell me, Oh, it seems like a hard sell. Well, not really. Like to me, a hard sell is convincing someone to do something. Um, and then knowing that you're kind of scamming them, but th this is like, to me, the best option for a landlord, because you get I someone agree. in there that's going to treat your place better than anyone else is going to treat it. And mm -hmm. you're going to be protected by Airbnb insurance. It's going to get clean sometimes as much as five times a week. Like it, it's just overall such a better way. Um, so again, Mitch, we're, we're on the Facebook group right now. I'm going to repurpose this on to our podcast. And so at this point, people who are listening on the podcast. Um, it will be on Thursday. Um, this one's coming to an end, but um, I want to, for our Facebook group, give a few tips. So if you're listening on the podcast right now and you're like, man, I missed out on those tips, just DM me and I'd love to be able to, to share a little bit more about what I think would be some good tips for you to start an Airbnb business. But for our Facebook group right now, let's talk some tips. All right, guys, the show notes for this one are going to be fearlesskyle.com forward slash Mitch Pomeroy Airbnb. We have two different ones with Mitch. We, had a, we actually had him on the show a while ago where he talked about his 500 units in apartments. But this one, because we're talking about Airbnb, it's going to be Mitch Pomeroy Airbnb. Pomeroy is P is in Paul, O-M-E-R-O-Y. 
Um, I mean, just so many good things there. If you don't see the vision after listening to that, then you're probably never going to see the vision for Airbnb, just being completely honest. Uh, but, uh, and this is a guy, by the way, who's doing arbitrage and killing it in arbitrage. He sees that for me, I love the managing model because I don't have to put any money in the deal and I can manage for other people, but whatever floats your boat, right? That's what's so great about this business about real estate or Airbnb. There's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. Um, so anyway, I hope you had a great time listening into Mitch today. Lots of value there. And thanks for helping, uh, allowing us to help you to uh, conquer the world of investing. We'll see you next time on the Fearless Investor Podcast.